life. Are you ready? Somebody say, I'm ready. You may take your seats. We're going into uh, John, the fourth chapter, John, John 4 and 10. Now, I'm not going to go into a, a, a whole sermon on the woman, the woman at, uh, at, the, at the well. I'm not going to go into a total thing about that, but there was a, a text, a, a verse that the Lord highlighted to me that will go along with what he is saying to his church on today. We know that she had an issue. The woman uh, at the well, she had a few uh, men problems, you know. She, she had five men, and then the one she was with was not her husband. And then uh, the next man, Jesus, is here talking to a number seven, amen, transformed her life. She was a little shady in the beginning because she didn't know who she was talking to. You know, it, it, it's a danger when you don't know who you're talking to. It's a danger when you don't recognize uh, uh, who it is that is standing right in front of you. And so, and so uh, uh, after, after Jesus, you know, reads her mail, after he tells her her story, after, you know, when he asked her, hey, you know, where's your husband at? You know, don't, isn't that just like God to ask a question that would just make you check yourself, that brings you right where you need to be? Adam, where art thou? It will help you figure out your spiritual location. Where, where are you? Well, that asking of that one question, you know, where's your husband? She's like, I don't have no husband. In other words, you don't want to talk about that. Any of us have, come on, anybody in here have something in your past you'd rather forget? I know I've seen some photos of some my before Christ time, my BC times, where, I, listen, I wanted to just cut them up, throw them away, act like that time never even existed. Don't show nobody that one. I want one that, come on, that's been fixed up, doctored up, come on, looks a little bit better. Well, listen, he went right there to it and said, come on, where's your husband? She said, I don't have one. He said, you said right, you've had five, and the one you're with is not your husband. Long story short, she goes all the way into to the point of, of getting her, her, her mail read and then eventually coming to the place where she asked for that drink that she was denying Jesus of. She realized she really needed to be asking him for a drink. Well, in this verse right here in John, uh, of John 4 and 10, I'm reading in the Message Bible, it says, Jesus answered, if you knew the generosity of God, who I am, you would be asking me for a drink, and I would give you fresh living water. In other words, Jesus understood that the reason why she did not ask for the drink of living water is because she was not aware. She didn't know. It wasn't in her capacity to request what she really needed because she didn't know anything about it. You cannot ask for what you don't know about. When I was looking at this particular scripture, the Holy Spirit prompted me and said, well, what about my church that does not know any longer what to ask me, what to look for? Oh, Lord, have mercy. See, if she had known... She was an unbeliever. You know, listen, the Samaritans had not, the Gentiles had not yet come into the fold. She did not know. But what about the born-again believers that have the Word of God, who God has made known His will, come on here, what He wants, and yet our conversation, our request is not in line with what He has spoken, what He has willed, what He has decided. So this conversation between the woman at the well and Jesus eventually ends up into her life being transformed by him. And speaking of conversation, let's talk about the communication. When we look in the, in the scripture, the Bible says that, that in, in John 16, 12 and 13, in the Amplified Bible, it says, Jesus is speaking to his disciples, I have still many things to say to you. Tell your neighbor, God has something he wants to say to you. He has another conversation that he wants to share with you. But you are not able to bear them or to take them upon you or grasp them now. In other words, Jesus is saying to them, I have more to give you, but you can't handle it. I have more I want to share with you, but you're not to the place where you could handle it. But something is going to make the difference. Look at what he says. But when he, the spirit of truth, the truth-given spirit comes, the truth-given spirit, not the lying spirit. The truth-given spirit. See, because once it's mixed with a lie, it can no longer be truth. Pure truth. Nothing but the truth. Somebody say nothing but the truth nothing but the truth okay but when he the spirit of truth the truth given spirit comes he will guide you into all truth the whole full truth 
For he will not speak his own message on his own authority, but he will tell you whatever he hears from the Father. He will give the message that has been given to him, and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. So here it is. The Holy Spirit gives us the capacity to understand or to communicate and hear revelation that we once could not receive. So he's saying to the disciples, you can't handle this right now. But after that, after he, the comforter, come on, the spirit of God, the power of God. Hallelujah. When you see the Holy Spirit, you see God at work. Amen. God at work. He comes to do something. He comes to make something happen. He, he comes to change things. He comes to tear down. He comes to uproot. Come on. He comes to establish. He comes to transform whatever you see the Holy Spirit. You see God at work. Come on. Uh, when that Red Sea was parted, you see God at work. That's the power of God. When they marched around the walls of Jericho seven days and on the seventh day, seven times and the wall fell flat. Pfft, that's God at work. The power of God. Jesus said, I'm sending uh, the comforter. He's going to come to you. He's not going to come to you and stand in front of you. He is going to indwell you. Come on, come on, come on. That is why they were, come on, on the day of Pentecost, the 120 in the upper room, remember? Come on, when it had fully come, Lord, and the power of God filled every one of them. Filled, Lord, have mercy. Not on the outside, not around the corner, not just looking at them, but filled them. Okay, see, 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 see. See, there's some things God wants to share with you. There's some places he wants to bring you, but the Holy Spirit is the only way that you can get there. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will teach you. He will show you things to come. Okay, so he comes and he dwells. He, he dwells in the believer. So we become, uh, we are now in the place where we are tabernacled by God. We are tabernacled by God. That means that your body is a sacred place. You are tabernacled by God. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So your body is now set apart. It is now sacred. It is now special. It should not be handled any kind of way because the indwelling of the Spirit of God, God dwelling on the inside of you, you are tabernacled by God. So therefore should not be handled in any kind of way or do any old type of thing or live any kind of way because of now who has tabernacled you. God God dwells in me. Somebody say, God dwells in me. And so the comforter now has now given us capacity to receive huh, revelation, to receive God. How, how many believers in here today? How many of you accepted Jesus as your personal savior? Oh, yes, 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 yes. How many of you baptized with the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, and so now, being that you are tabernacled by God, average living is not in your DNA. Average is not your lifestyle. You live the lifestyle of the supernatural because the power of God exists on the inside of you. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. His power is always excellent. It is never good and just average and okay. It is always excellent. It is always, come on, come on, come on, superb. It is always bullseye. It is always two to T. It always gets the job done. Oh, he never misses. It's not 99. It's always 100 when it is the Spirit of God. So then why is it that we condone things, come on, that we know is just off as two left shoes and then call it God? No, 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 no. Don't you give God that mess. That might be us, but it ain't God. See, in order for him to take control, he, the Holy Spirit, to take control, not in it, but he, God, on the inside of us, God's presence, his power on the inside of us. In order for him to take the lead and for us to see the results that God would have us to see in our life, in our communities, in our families, we must yield to the Holy Spirit. See, we're looking, come on, uh, believers today, are looking some for the Holy Spirit to endorse what he didn't start. 
See, he's not endorsing what we start. He endorses what he already started, what he initiated, what he called, what he established, and then his power will take over. But when we go over and do our own thing, our own agenda, and take on worldly ways, and take on secularism, come on here, and flirting and dancing with the devil, he don't add his power to that. He just allows us, come on, come on to do what we want to do, because he will never take away the gift of choice. You can work hard, or you can work smart. You can work hard, I'll say it again, or you can work smart, because when the Holy Spirit does it, it is not all of your strength and all of your power, but it is him at work, Lord, have mercy, that you are watching do a divine thing through, oh my God, have mercy, hey, a person, a man, a woman, a boy, a girl that he has chosen, that has surrendered to his will. So... Conversation, can you handle the conversation? Real talk, huh? This is real right here. See, because what has happened is that there are some that have known God in a deep way, in an intimate way, and have allowed shallow people, world opinions, social media, the news, and other outlets to shout at them and shout them out of deep into shallow. So conversations of revelation and things that God would reveal to them, they're letting them go because the world calls it foolishness. So we're letting go of what we're supposed to hold on to for dear life because somebody that doesn't have a clue, that doesn't know anything about it, doesn't have an experience with him, doesn't recognize what this really is. And I don't know about you, but I made up my mind. I'm not letting go of what I know just because you don't know it. Check this out in the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. For he that speaks, we're talking about this conversation here. For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men, but to God. For no man understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. No man understands him. So now we're talking about conversation. Okay, so some have taken what Paul expressed to the church about speaking in tongues. I'd rather that you, what, prophesy. In other words, he was saying, so he wanted it to be made plain for unbelievers and new believers. Because when you speak in unknown tongues, they don't understand it. But the message was never to halt using that language. Speaking in unknown tongues because they don't understand it. It was just saying, be strategic when you're going after souls to make it plain so that they could, come on, come on, communicate with you to accept Christ so that you could share the message of Christ. But it was never meant to forsake, come on here, a language that was given by God. Communication that is directly, directly between you and God. You're speaking directly to God. Well, who wouldn't use a language given to you that was given for you to speak directly to God? Not only is it directly to God, but men don't understand it unless they've been given the interpretation. The devil can't decode it. He can't figure it out. He can't tap he can't listen in on it. So now, those, you have some that have been given, come on, this language from God. Language from God speaks directly to God. And they've stopped speaking in tongues, people. 
because to CNN, to news stations, media outlets, maybe your favorite radio personality, that sounds like buffoonery. That sounds like something wrong with you, okay? But they don't realize that that language has been given from God, okay? That language, when you speak in unknown tongues, you bring mysteries to where you are. So if you're in your bedroom and you're in there and you're you just released in your bedroom mysteries. In your car, you just released mysteries. In your kitchen, you just brought mysteries right to where you are. It is the trick of the enemy to get the people to get away from the deeper things of God so that we don't see the treasures that God has placed on the inside of us. Oh Lord, have mercy. So we just hang out in shallow. See, we're not supposed to dabble in the things of God. We're supposed to dive in the things of God. Oh Lord. Shallow. See, shallow, you can jump in and out of real quickly. You can switch really quickly. You can turn really quickly, you know. You can be saved really quickly, and then you can be, uh, come on, come on, a street walker really quickly. You could be for Christ really quickly, and then when something happens, and, and, and it doesn't line up with the Word of God, but it does line up with popular opinion, you go with popular opinion. It's very easy to just switch back and forth, to get in and out just like that. But somebody in here is saying, I refuse to Settle for shallow. Come on, you know shallow. You know shallow, shallow, shallow. Shallow will walk in with a couture dress and a bargain Betty prayer life. You know shallow, shallow will drive up with a Bentley. Come on, here, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And a Honda Hyundai, a Hyundai broken down prayer life. Let me tell you something. Shallow is not the way to be. You got to dive into the deep things of God. So I'm all for reaching the lost. Let's hand out some donuts. I'm for that. We do that. We'll, we'll give out donuts. We'll give out coffee. But we're not supposed to become a donut. If I'm giving you donuts, we're doing this with a, with a deeper thing in mind. Hallelujah. And you would come to know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that can deliver you from anything. But while I'm handing out the donuts, I can't get stuck on donuts and get away from deeper. See, if we're going to win the world, we don't need to become just like the world and give up the deep things of God. We're supposed to be able to communicate to somebody that does not know the Lord while yet staying, remaining in the deep things of God. So Paul wasn't saying, hey, don't speak in tongues, because he said, I speak in tongues more than ye all. In other words, it was one of his secret weapons, huh, that he would speak in tongues. That's why he had so much revelation. He would speak in tongues. And see, it takes the power of God. Lord have mercy. Romans 8 and 26 says this. I love where the scripture talks about how the Spirit, so too, the Holy Spirit comes to our aid, conversation, and bears us up in our weakness. For we do not know what prayer to offer nor how to offer it worthily as we ought. But the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. Not shallow, but too deep for utterance. 
Okay, so now we're still in this communication. Prayer is communicating with us, communicating with God. So now when we have that language that has been imparted to us, we can speak that language at any time, right? You, can you speak English? You can speak it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You just open your mouth. All right. When God has given you a language, you can speak it at any time. You just open your mouth. If you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, open your mouth. The language is there. But now this part of the communication, see, you can do that. You can open your mouth. You have the language. Use it. He's imparted that. But this right here says that the Spirit of God meets our supplication. In other words, there's something for us to do on our part. We have to show up. Huh? You got to show up. You got to meet him. So he will meet our supplication. When's the last time you showed up to the meeting? When's the last time you showed up? Hallelujah. When it wasn't in a crowd, but in your house, in your car, on your floor, in your bathroom. When's the last time you met him? Oh, Lord, have mercy. When's the last time you showed up and he met your supplication? He meets your supplication so that it is not a waste of time but so that it is an accurate prayer that is consistent with the will of God over your life. He meets our supplication so that what is being released is totally in alignment with God's will and God's plan. God's will and God's plan. God's will and God's plan. The Holy Spirit will get real specific on you. Notice when the angel showed up to Mary, hail Mary, thou art highly favored to tell her how she's going to carry the child, the son of God, the only begotten of the father. Notice the angel then come around and say, congratulations, we heard you get married. Congratulations, we came to celebrate with you. See, when the Holy Spirit overshadows you he is not coming to overshadow you about your curtains he has come to overshadow you about your purpose what God's original intent is he goes right to it you want to stop running around the mountain till she comes allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you because he's going to take you right to purpose right to destiny right to the will of God right to who you really are right to how God wants to use you he don't beat around the bush so now he meets our supplication and he does something held a camp he he utters groanings unspeakable yearnings too deep for utterance that's not the same as when we're speaking in our unknown language the language that God has given to us speaking in tongues this is a point in the conversation where he through your tabernacle body releases groanings and utterance he he releases a sound a groan himself that come on cannot be articulated it cannot oh lord have mercy there is no human word to verbalize it it's too deep it's beyond this world but everything that needs to respond to it responds But don't do that. That's too much. They won't let you on their platform. They won't let you have a TV show. Don't we have enough mockeries out there? Don't we have enough clowning spirits out there? Clowning the body of Christ? Making a shipwreck? Misrepresenting the kingdom? And so the enemy has caught people out of deep into shallow, based upon wanting to appear before men with their five-step program. Oh, well, if you do number one, if you just wiggle your toe, if you do number two, read these five books. But I got somebody in here that knows you did one thing, obey God. You just did what he told you to do, and you got what scholars couldn't get. You got what money couldn't get. You were able to get miracles the supernatural by so 
surrendering to God. What he does, and he who searches the heart of men knows what's in the mind of the Holy Spirit. Do you hear that? He who searches uh, the hearts of men, he searches the hearts of men. See, that's the Holy Ghost I know, the one that searches your heart. The one that when you got unforgiveness to say, he go right to it. See, he's, he, he's the truth giver. He not going to flirt around and play around with it. He not going to beat around the bush. He going to go right to it and say, hey, you need to ask for forgiveness. You need to let that go. You need to forgive your brother. I don't know this ghost that folks is jumping around with that makes you go deeper and wrong. But the Holy Ghost I know will cause you to come to repentance, cause you to say, I'm sorry, cause you to give up the world and be saved cause you come on come on to deny yourself for the greater works of God cause you to do what God wants you to do and not what your flesh wants to do see the Holy Ghost I know don't let you be strong and wrong these garbage messages today that is all about feeling good what you want what you want to do how you can have some more and some more too that has nothing to do with what God wants I'm telling you if I was hearing that kind of preaching when I was coming up I don't think I would be saved I needed to hear a message that would make me break up with my boyfriend make me cut some stuff off anybody know what I'm talking about that when you got sure enough saved you cut something off there were some friends you couldn't hang out with anymore. There were some relationships you had to let go. There were some places you didn't go anymore. But now with this mess, it is sending people right into the den of thieves, right into hell's clutches, right into deeper sin. Because we've corrupted the message. Because love tells the truth. The preachers are cowards. Teachers have turned into cowards. Shallow teachers. Because they're looking to appease men. They're looking for men to like them. They're looking for popularity. They're looking for the crowd. But when you are deep, when, I ain't about deep and often something spooky, because God is not spooky. But when you go into the deeper things of God, you don't care if the world says amen. As long as God gives the approval nod, you don't care if they follow you on social media. As long as goodness and mercy follows you, you don't care if they leave you. As long as he's with you, you don't care if they persecute you, call you out your name, as long as your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm too deep to be shallow. I'm too deep to be swayed. As a matter of fact, I've gotten so deep in God, I can't find my way out of Him. I'm not trying to appear before men as a superstar. I'm trying to hide so that Christ can be seen. I don't want them to mention my name. I want them to say his name. What's his name? Jesus, Jesus, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, Jesus, the son of the living God, Jesus, my bridge over troubled water, Jesus, my food when I'm hungry, water when I'm thirsty, friend, when I'm lonely, 
Jesus, the lifter of my head, my sustainer, my buckler, my shield, my covering, my great I am. He is my destiny. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. I'm not ashamed to shout. I'm not ashamed to pray. I'm not ashamed to say his name. I'm not ashamed to speak in tongues. I'm not ashamed to fast. I'm not ashamed to go in a shut-in. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of Pentecost. I'm not ashamed of the power of God overshadowing me. I'm not ashamed when he quickens me. I'm not ashamed when he makes me holler. I'm not ashamed when he causes me to roll. I'm not ashamed when I get out my car and go to dancing. I'm not ashamed to go in my backyard, lift my hands up and shout glory. I'm not ashamed to get on my knees in a public place and say to God, be the glory. Touch my people and tell them I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Just because you don't know better. I know I have an experience with him. It looks like nothing to you, but something's happening in the spirit. I'm not ashamed of the power of Pentecost in my life. Folks have gotten away from these things because they want to appear to be okay with the world. And I'm for you, yes, pass out the donuts, give out the cupcakes, give away free houses. We do that too, we give cars away, give money away. But oh, you've got to be kidding. If you think I'm gonna stop shouting when I know my PhD didn't get me where I am. If you think I'm gonna stop giving him the glory. Oh, no, 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 no. See, I'm trying to dive into the deeper things of God. You know, the intent, I, I intend to know him better. Somebody in here, your affections are set. I just want to know you more. I just want to love you more. I just want to serve you more. I just want to do your will. Oh, I want to be a better witness. To do that, I can only do that through him because there is no amount of human reasoning that could cause us to receive and understand what it is that God wants to share with us. It was him, he, the Holy Spirit who drew you when you gave your heart to the Lord. It could have been on Sunday morning and the preacher was preaching. And then all of a sudden, you felt the need to repent. Could have been a missionary on the mission field and while you were going through your daily living, they witnessed to you. And you were drawn to ask for forgiveness. You recognized that you needed a savior. I just wanna let you know that that recognition was not because you went to school and were able to make an educated decision. You can only learn God from God. You can only comprehend God from God. God has to communicate himself to us. Are you following? So that's why the scripture says, who knows the mind or the thoughts of a man except the person thinking it. 
Who knows what you were thinking this morning before you came here? And some of you say, thank God. They don't know everything that ran through this mind. Well, when it comes to the things of God, the Spirit of God knows the mind of God. The Holy Spirit knows everything about what the Father is thinking. So it takes the power of God to communicate to us what the Father's will is. In other words, to make it where we actually get it. Because just because you can repeat it doesn't mean you got it. Just because you quote it don't mean you have it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But when the Holy Spirit gives it to you, you got it. In other words, you can live it. You can function in it. You can walk in it. You can see the manifestation because it takes God to reveal God. Tell your neighbor, it takes God to reveal God. So there's no human reasoning that can convince you who God is. It takes the Holy Spirit. It was not the preacher to do it. It was the Holy Spirit on the preaching. It was the Holy Spirit drawing your heart. It takes God for a believer to believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. No human reasoning would cause you to believe of, of the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Human reasoning cannot go there. It takes God himself that gives it to you to know, to understand, to comprehend, to receive it, to accept it. Lord have mercy. But it didn't finish with just there. But the power of God didn't just give you to know that Jesus is Savior, but he is present with you to lead you into your destiny, to take you into the deeper things of God, to take you into how God is going to use you even in the second part of this year. God is going to blow your mind. Your second half of 2018 is going to far supersede the first part. The power of God it's going to take you smack dab in the middle of God's purpose and God's plan. Remember, it's never average. It's never dare to do. It's never just a little bit. But this is major. The Bible says, check this out as we close. In 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, we, of course, I'm reading from the Message Bible, have plenty of wisdom to pass on to you once you get your feet on spiritual ground once you grow up we got something to pass to you i got a message for somebody once you grow up and stop drinking milk and eat the meat of the word god's gonna pass you something once you grow up and stop needing a diaper change and the pacifier and somebody to clean up your mess and baby you into coming to church burp you you keep staying there you're gonna have low level living because the bible says as long as the heir is a child they live as a servant the heir who owns it all lives like one of the servants until it comes of age. Well, until you grow up and stop messing around, playing in your feelings, dibbling and dabbling, stalking Facebook, stalking people's pages with fake names and coward statements until you learn how to stop stalking fleshly ways you're going to see lower level living. I don't have time to stalk nobody's Facebook page. I don't have time for cyber stalking. Why? Because I'm too busy stalking my destiny. My destiny is in Jesus. I'm too busy stalking him in prayer, in the word and seeking him, talking to him, pursuing him, communicating with him, asking him, worshiping him, 
loving him. You want to get out the garbage. Stalk your destiny. Your destiny is in Jesus. He has everything that you need. The world will chew you up and spit you out. But if you go with God, God will make you irresistible, undeniable, incredible. Because of his power, he'll give you access where things seem inaccessible. He'll set you up and nobody will be able to take you down. He'll cover you. He'll shield you. He'll protect you. He'll preserve you. He'll encourage you. He'll lift you. He'll invigorate you. He'll establish you. He'll strengthen you. He'll settle you. If you go after Jesus, he'll show you the inheritance that is in you. We, of course, have plenty of wisdom to pass on to you once you get on your feet and have spiritual, or on firm spiritual ground. But it is not popular wisdom, the fashionable wisdom of high priced experts that will be out of date in a year or so. God's wisdom is something mysterious that goes deep into the interior of his purposes. You don't find it lying around on the surface. It's not the latest message, but more like the oldest. What God determined how to bring out the best in you long before we were ever arrived on the scene. Okay, okay, okay. So the power of God, Lord have mercy, doesn't go playing around, dibbling and dabbling on the surface. He doesn't try to keep up with a message that's going to be outdated in a year. And it just makes me bonkers when I see the church listening to the world and their aha moments when they take their aha from the Bible but don't give God the credit saying something he already said. Then they act like they came up with some illumination and revelation and then act like it's them or the universe. But they don't praise the creator of the universe. And the church goes and takes on this truth mixed with a lie. And they act like they got some deep understanding. When, when God deals with you, it is not something that is out of style in a year, but it is timeless. It is always relevant. God's word is always relevant, always on time, always on point, always to be used, always effective, always powerful, always accomplishing, always getting the job done so you can run after the world and the world's ways, but it's going to be out of date in just a year. But the power of God, when you yield to him, he takes you, he dives into the interior of the plan of God. He gets right to it. Anybody ever seen a diver? A diver doesn't just dive and land on top of the water. The diver goes deep into the water. That's what the Holy Spirit does in your life when you allow him to take over that's why the enemy wants you to be ashamed to let God have his way to holler to shout to dance to groan to speak in tongues because if you do if you allow God's power to do that in you, you just took a dive into deeper. Tell your neighbor, it's time to dive into deeper all the way with God. Don't dabble, dive, dabble, don't dabble, dabble. Says shout, then go 
won't fornicate, but die. Says I once fornicated, but I ain't doing that again. Cause I dived into deeper. I'm not gonna touch it anymore. I'm not going there anymore. I'm not drinking it anymore. I'm not smoking it anymore. I'm not gossiping anymore. I'm not lying anymore. I took a dive. Tell your neighbor what you're waiting for. Ask them what you're waiting for. Don't look for love in all the wrong places. Don't go down that dead end street that would only cause you to be disappointed. But run and take a dive. Run into deeper. There's more that God has planned for you. There's more that he wants to do through you. There's more that he wants to bring out of you. Oh, you thought you seen something, but I'm telling you, what's next will outdo the rest. God said those that die will come up with the treasures, will see my glory, my power, my wisdom, my strength, my intelligence. You will see the miraculous power of God. It is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the power of God that causes us to do what ordinary men could never do. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord, those that will run and dive. Get ready. God is gonna blow your mind. How do we reach the masses, men of every birth for an answer? Jesus is the key. He said, I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me well how are we gonna reach this in time harvest we gotta dive into deeper and deeper we don't lift up our flesh we don't lift up worldly appetite we lift up jesus the one who gave his life, we declare the one and only name whereby men can be saved. Then his power will draw like never before. How did they see 3,000 saved in a day? Cause they were filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. They spoke in unknown tongues. They spoke another language. God is doing something with your communication. The men outside heard their language being spoken. Uh-oh, somebody's taking a dive. Uh-oh. Somebody's taking a run. Uh-oh. Somebody's just going to do it. Uh-oh. There's no more delaying. We're diving in the things of God. Watch out. You just got a breakthrough in communication. Watch out. The power of God just gave you the ability to communicate in a new place. The power of God is giving you the ability to function. The unctionizer is unctionizing you to communicate in a new arena. Somebody in this place right now is getting ready to die. You're not ashamed. You're not ashamed. That's right. 
I don't care how I look. I'm like David. I'll dance. Talk about me. I'll keep dancing. Say that's not becoming. I'll keep shouting. Is there anybody here that's ready to take a dive? 